to my channel. Today's day two of repotting orchids. I've got three that I'm gonna do. I don't have too much energy today, so I'm just gonna do three. I'll keep it nice and simple. Um, I've got one that's gonna go into organic, one that I'm transitioning from organic to semi-hydro, and one that's in LECA already that I'm gonna divide, give a piece to my mom, and um, just sort of upsize the pot. And then before getting started, let me show you guys the uh, pots that I just got. They just arrived in the mail just now as I was about to record. So let me show you what I got and then we can jump right into the repotties. So the first few pots are tea for you pots. Uh, these are like kind of like a cement color. Um, I got them in three different sizes. One of them, the largest one is five and three quarter inches. The other one's five inches and this one I believe is four inches. These have drainage holes on the bottom. They seem really thick and good quality and they weren't too expensive. So my thinking is that I'll probably just pot up my Phalaenopsis in there, um, the summer bloomers. And I hate the pots with the slots because the roots get tangled up in them and I know that I can water them well without having to monitor the roots. So I'm just getting these and I'm not gonna worry too much about uh, what kind of pots um, I have, um, but yeah. Uh, let me show you the next one. So these are the self-watering pots that I got. On the left, I've got seven inch self-watering pots from the Garden X brand. And on the right, I got seven and a half hanging pots from the Garden X brand. I don't think I'll be able to use these for all of my orchids. I would love to, but um, some of them are still a little small. And seven inches and seven and a half inches takes up a lot of real estate in the grow space. So I may have to stick with some of the existing pots for some of my smaller orchids, but otherwise, I got 15 of those, so I'm going to be slowly repotting them, and um, you know, I think I'm going to run out of pots quickly, just given that it's, you know, I got a, a huge collection to go through, but I also have a couple of 7-inch uh, tea for you round pots with the water indicator that I got, um, and those I got last year and I never used them, so I'm going to get through those as well. And then when we run out, I may just use deli containers or something like that, but I had a gift card for Amazon and I figured I'd just um, invest in some nice pots where I could keep these orchids in for like two years and not have to worry too much about repotting them. Well, let me show you the orchids I'm gonna be repotting and we'll get started. These are the three orchids I'm gonna be repotting. This first one is a Tulumnia. This one's a Tulumnia vol volutinum. Um, I've got a couple of growths in there. I got this from um, Let's Talk Plants, or rather the store is called The Tiny Jungle. This was gifted to me, so thank you so much, Tony. I'm gonna be repotting this into moss in this little clay pot. This one was a gift from my mom a while back, and I feel a little bad because it's so dehydrated, but it's in bark, and th that's sort of the issue in my environment. I can grow in bark, but I have to keep up with the watering almost every day in this humidity level. So it's very, very dry. I water it three times a week, if you can believe, but it's quite desiccated. I think it'll do well in semi-hydro. And if I wasn't using semi-hydro, I would need some moss in that mixture to hydrate this because I can't keep up with that watering. So I think this will do well in semi-hydro just given, you know, it's, it's totally my bad for not being able to water. But this is when I talk about using materials that work for your environment. Just bark, pure bark just doesn't work for me. It's just, um, it dries out too fast in the winter because it's dry and it dries out too, some, too quickly in the summer because it's hot. So we're gonna upgrade that setup and make sure that this uh, gets more hydrated. Next one we're gonna do is the Brassavola or rather Rincolelia digbiana. We've got growths coming in from both ends. I do think there are two plants in here. When I repotted it, everything was really tangled. I was very careful with it, but I think it's apparent that there's two plants because there's just two directions of growth. There's two growths coming out here. There's another one coming here. And when you look at the middle, it's like the growths are really, really tiny. So I don't think there's anything going on here but we'll see if we could separate them and I'm gonna gift a piece of that to my mom. So with that said, let's get started. I didn't mention this, but I am soaking the um, the cattleya just to get the bark nice and loose. So this one's gonna be our easiest repot though. So I've got a couple of pieces. I've been sharing a lot of divisions with my mom. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate this out so she gets some pieces and um, I will keep some pieces. So one of them has a spike, which is pretty nice. Um, let's see, this little clay pot, I think I'll use it. Let me see. 
a little bit uh it's got a big hole in it so do i want to keep this i think i can it came with like a little foam piece adds a little drainage a little bit of leca i think i'm just going to keep the foam piece in there and i'm just going to add leca it's fine so when I first started growing Tulumnias, I thought it would be a great idea to put them into semi-hydro and they died on me. So semi-hydro is not great for Tulumnias. I actually learned um, from Miss Orchid Girl that these guys need wet dry cycles and um, they do much better when they can dry quickly. So this is in a clay pot. So I'll water this. As soon as that dries, which is probably going to be like every day in my climate, um, in the winter with it being so dry, it's things still dry fast. So put that in there, and then that should be good. And then it's got the um, it's got the little foam peanut in the foam in the bottom. I'm just going to water it to make sure that water is coming down fine, and then we are good to go with that one. This little one, I have a little two inch pot. I'm gonna put these tiny babies in there next. So this one's just gonna be pure moss. I'm gonna tell my mom to just make sure that it's draining and she could move it into her preferred setup. My mom grows organic media only. She does not use LECA. So we have a very different style from each other. She grows indoors in a greenhouse she has a little rather like an ikea greenhouse it's pretty nice and she grows a lot of little mini cattleyas and they do really well for her so when they say you can't grow indoors the way that things have come lately you really can the lights are are really good right now they're nice and strong you can bloom lots of cattleyas now my next uh biggest uh Thing that I want to do is bloom vandas one day. That requires more humidity than I have. I'm growing some Phoenicia types, but vanda proper? We'll see. Well, these two are done. Now we will move on to the other two Catlias. Alrighty, we've got the Digbiana here. This one has grown really nicely. Um, so let's take it out. I had it soaking in some water. This was growing in, in a self-watering setup with Leka. We've got some roots coming in on the bottom. Let's see. You can sort of see the new growths coming out on the side. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Okay, it wasn't so pot bound. I probably could have gotten away with leaving it there, but this growth here... We've got two growths, one here and one on the other side. So two growths are gonna come out, and I think those would have grown outside of the pot, so I don't want that. Otherwise, the root system looks good. We don't have any dead roots. So this had a wick that I used. I'm not, I'm not potting into, um, maybe I'll still use the wick, but I'll talk about that later. Let me clear this up. So happy this one's not a like super pot bound orchid like the yellow bird or like the orchid that I showed you guys in my last video. My um my little mini cerulea catlia. This one's pretty easy. I soaked it in water so things are quite easy to move. And then this actually got a little bit of a cleanup because my cat knocked it down. Um maybe about seven, eight months ago, so it did get a little bit of a repotting. One thing I'll say is that I hate this like moss that grows on top. I really don't like the way it looks, so I always try to kind of rip it out. I know some people do like it, and they like to propagate it. I just I, I don't like the look. But you can't help it when you're growing in an always wet environment. Let's see what I can take out. But um, anyway, somebody asked me in the comments about pot size when they're uh, working with orchids, and... I said I'd address it in this video. Well, when you're growing with LECA, LECA is an always moist system, so pot size doesn't really matter. And I know that there's a lot of advice out there on making sure that you use smaller pots when you're repotting orchids, but I'll say that a lot of that is uh, 
wisdom that you get from growers that use organic. So when you grow in um, organic media, if you're using a larger pot, it takes a while for the, the roots to dry out. If you're using a really big pot, yeah, okay, I will come back to that. This is definitely two plants. I did not want to uh, mess with the roots last time, so I didn't touch it, but yeah, this is falling apart. This is perfect. I bought this orchid um, from Hauserman in fall of 2020. I repotted it along with the yellow bird. Oh, I don't want to mess up any of the roots. Um, I repotted it with the yellow bird, and um, this orchid was four years from blooming. And now that I've had it for a while, about a year and a half, almost going on two years, I think it'll be much closer to blooming. So I'm going to give this to my mom. I'll keep this one. And then uh, we'll both have a Digbiana that's a seedling that's a little bit closer to blooming. Now, I, I didn't want to cut off the wick, but I think I'm going to have to. So the roots have grown into it. So the wick, the purpose of the wick is to absorb water and soak it all up so it could stay moist. Um, roots have grown into this wick, so it's going to be a challenge to get it all out. I'm so I'm going to remove this, and I may have to take a little break to cut this off. But getting back to the pot size, when you're growing in organic media, um, a lot of the pots, they it's better for them to dry sooner rather than stay wet. Because when you give wet dry cycles, you don't want something to stay wet for an extremely long time. So with LECA, it doesn't really matter because the roots grow adapted into an always moist system. So if you could put it put an orchid into a pot that's a little bit larger to accommodate new growths you'll be repotting a little less often and i don't think you'll be affected too much like they there's always some um, comments about oh orchids like to be pot bound but that's really for organic media like you really don't want an orchid to stay wet in organic because the media eventually degrades and then bark eventually turns to dust and then you eventually suffocate the roots. Does that make sense? Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions there, but when you're growing with LECA, LECA doesn't compact on you. LECA, do, oops, I broke a root. Ugh. LECA is inorganic, so it won't break down, so you're less likely to need any, um, you're less likely to have to need a uh, small pot, um, and the environment for the roots is exactly the same. All right, guys, I'm going to come back to get this right off. These yeah. came out pretty good. So we got the new growths here. The roots are in good shape. I don't really see dead roots. Um, maybe that one there. But otherwise, other than the, um, than the roots that f came out of the wick, these roots are in good shape. Same with this uh, side as well. So I'm going to pop this up in organic for my mom, and we're going to put this in LECA. Now, I was debating putting this in a larger pot or just keeping it in the existing pot. And I think for this one, I'm going to keep it in the existing pot, put the edge all the way in the front, and it should be okay for the next year. I just can't justify putting this into a 6 or 7 inch pot that takes up a lot of real estate when I know it's not going to fill the pot up right away. So... This one we'll probably have to put in that larger pot next year. So I just washed it. It has algae inside, which is totally normal. And I'm just going to go ahead and pot this up. So the way that I use the wick is I put the wick through the holes in the bottom of the pot. This is just a regular frosted pot. I hold the wick up and start filling with LECA. So therefore, the wick is sort of up here wicks the water from the bottom and then the LECA will pull that moisture that it gets around all of the clay pebbles. So I'm going to go ahead and start repotting it right now and I will come back once this is all set. But the key is I keep the wick nice and high and that gives lots of moisture. The Ola Digbiana is all done. I push the old growth all the way to the edge of the pot and we have the new growths here. I think we'll be fine for another year and we should be okay and the one on the left is going to my mom so there will be lots of divisions happening <laughs> so um little by little we'll get through everything now let's move on to the last orchid all right this has been soaking for a while kaolo katlia ethos paradise hawaii so let's get this out of the bark pot 
Hopefully no snails or anything up in here. This should be pretty easy. I should always have um, gloves ready. This is, was very broken down. A lot of these roots are dead. It smells a little awful. That's okay. It's Some of it's like, eh. These roots are all dead. Now a part of me is wondering if I should go ahead and put this in LECA or if I should wait to have a little bit of a more healthier root system. We don't see any new roots. Guys, so you know what I'm going to do? This root system is not healthy. We don't have any new root tips. When you're transitioning to LECA, new root tips are really important. I didn't realize that this was in such uh, poor shape. And this is mostly my fault for not keeping up with the watering. I'm going to cut off the dead roots. It's basically all of these back here. And then what we're going to do is there are some new root tips, but they're desiccated because it's been so dry here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the old stuff and I'm going to put this into moss. I'm going to put it into moss and then when new root tips start coming out, then I'll transition it to LECA. So when you transition to LECA, this is really important, you will have sometimes the old root system is going to fail. When you don't have new root tips like this, this is a new root but no root tips, this has a big chance of failing. If we lose these roots, this is what's keeping the plant alive, we're going to stress this orchid out even more. So don't transition an unhealthy orchid into LECA. This is going to need wet dry cycles. I feel so bad. I let this desiccate so much, and I should have repotted it sooner. I got this maybe at the end of last summer, and I wasn't able to keep up with all that watering. So I'm going to clean this up, cut these old roots off, sterilize my tools, and make sure that this goes into some moss to get it rehydrated. Then we'll revisit in a couple of weeks. So I will come back with this all cleaned up. All right, I've cut off all of the old roots. So now the name of the game is keeping these roots alive and getting more growing root tips. This was totally my bad for dropping the ball. Look how dry this is. I do think we can rehabilitate this though. I'm gonna put it in moss in this cup and then we'll revisit once it has roots. But you never wanna put an orchid into semi-hydro if the root system is not good to begin with. That'll just stress out the orchid even more. Let me grab a slightly bigger pot. All right. It's going back in a pot around its size. Oh, this poor plant. Okay. I think it'll be okay, but yeah. We don't want those roots to fail. And semi-hydro is for healthy, <laughs> healthy rooted plants only. The minute you start messing with an orchid with questionable roots to begin with, they're not gonna do well, and those roots are gonna fail, and your orchid may die. So, wild, and they get wet dry cycles, and when you put them in semi-hydro, they have roots that adapt to the new growing system, but if you only have a couple of roots and no new growing tips, the chances that those roots are gonna fail are very high. And that is a big risk when you're dealing with something that doesn't have that many roots. I'm going to get a little bit of moss to top that off, but that is it for day two. So we had the Brassavola digbiana, which was pretty easy. And then we had this orchid that's so dehydrated that, oops, <laughs> I clearly do not like bark in my environment. I just can't keep up with that watering. But this will pull through. We'll do updates on this. And I'm going to top this off with a tiny bit more bark, get this nice and hydrated. And when we have new root tips growing, then I'll transition it over. I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And I will see you on the next repotting update next week. Bye, everyone.